if you could comment on whether you think um, the families could sustain this without your support and whether you think there's potential for scaling this to a, a much larger group. Did we find out why? Because I just went in with an intervention. Question is, did we find out why they were not doing it before since they had the milk? But I'm saying that that is, seems to be a little general. It looks like everybody comes and decides that this must be the intervention without really finding out why they are not doing what you think they should be doing. But I want to use that as an example. So my question is, I know that uh, zinc protoforphrin is like a gold standard for measuring zinc status. So I was wondering why that was not measured, but rather they looked at the plasma zinc concentration. Earlier on this afternoon, we learned that um, household producing the milk actually have more, or have their children taking more milk. But that is contradictory to what you are saying now, that those that produce their milk taking few milk, fewer milk consumption. I'm asking, do you, have you come across that literature? And how do you just oppose that with your information? OK, um, I, I have a few questions. So um, let, me, let me start with the sustainability, the question that he asked, and also how to get it to the larger crop. Yeah. Actually, what we did, we tried to make sure that we're using the, the local foods available in, the, in those areas, and also using the local techniques so that these people shouldn't see this as something that is not within them, though that they should be able to do it using the available resources. That's why our, our, our interventions on the um, milk product smoothies, we're using the local uh, fruits and also the materials that we're using, we try to modify it to make sure that it's within their capability to do it. And the other thing that we also did, we tried to make sure that we reduce the, the quantity of milk that they should see they're using it for milk products processing. Because if we come up with uh, recipes that will use a lot of milk, they will be debating. If it means they are reducing milk for selling. So we tried to also reduce the quantity quantity of milk being used by coming up with recipes that will not take up a lot of milk to see that they're not losing out on selling. So this is what, what we do as a way of sustainability. But for us also to see if this is really now happening, so we are recommending another study to go and see what is happening on the, on the ground. Are people still doing what they were taught to do? Because our inline data, it was collected soon after the intervention. So maybe that will also be able to, to tell us what is really uh, happening after the, the, the intervention. Now, on the larger group on how to upscale this, I think uh, coming with the results, we're able to see that the women, they were more enthusiastic of doing it because they were able to come to make milk products, mostly smoothies. Over 80% of the ladies, the, the caregivers, were making milk smoothies maybe at least four times a week. So this was like a good development in our part that people are practicing. So upscaling it, it will also depend if we really see that the women are continuing making these milk products so that we are able to have a backing that it is really working even after the intervention. So another question was on uh, when we are coming up with the interventions, did we consult? We had reconnaissance service with the milk backing group committees. So these milk backing groups are run by the committees. So we had a reconnaissance service with the, uh, them using the focus group discussions. So we were able to find out their problems and they raised that they, they don't feed their children more of the milk products because they don't uh, process them at household level. So that is why we came up with this uh, intervention. And they also... To them, milk was just, was it, as we are just supposed to feed them without having proper information. So we thought that maybe if they know the importance of milk to their children, this knowledge will be like a driving force to make them to feed them more. So that's why we came up with this intervention. We had found out what they were actually, uh, actually doing on the ground. 
So um, the question on, um, I, I didn't get it properly, but in my introduction, what I said that consumption of milk even among daily farming households, it is not much because the study that was conducted among daily farming households, it found that it was at 5.2, um, while nationally we are, our consumption is at 5.1 per capita per, per year, that is. So even the children in these households, the consumption of milk was not, was not much because even our baseline was able to pick that using even the 24-hour recall that children, they were not given much of the milk, but rather if they were to consume milk, it was through porridge. So which we can't really count much that a child has consumed milk through porridge because the actual drink would matter more. Yep, happy to clarify the biomarkers we used. So we did measure plasma zinc concentration as our primary outcome, um, but we also used the opportunity to compare with some of the more novel biomarkers um, of zinc status, and we wanted to see if those would be appropriate to use in, in resource-poor settings such as this. Did you establish any other animal source foods that were consumed by the children? Because other than milk consumption, there could be other animal source foods that could contribute to better nutrition outcomes. My question is all about um, the ethical considerations of the work you did. Did you do some kind of consent note before the study to reassure the respondents? Because um, the respondents, being um, HIV patients, makes um, the study some kind of um, vulnerable, you know, to your respondents. So I want to know the ethical measures you took. This being a clinical trial, um, actually passed through all the necessary IRB approvals for ethical considerations. And before a participant is actually enrolled into the study, we also conducted an informed consent and had the participants sign to be included in the study, so it was well taken care of. We also looked at the minimum acceptable diet for the children, so we, we also looked at the food groups which the children are eating more, but it was found out that it was the, the beans that they were eating more. So then the other animal source foods that they were consuming was in the form of small fish, but the percentage was not, was not much. So the animal source food consumption, even in this group, it was not very, very good because it was mostly based on the regumes and their relish. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time.